we are live. Music. Real estate agent. Are you looking to acquire clients consistently so you can grow your business and your income to live a great lifestyle? This is Dave Finale and the RE Skill Builder Podcast. Hey everybody, it's Friday. It's 11 a.m. Eastern Time or Eastern Daylight Time or Eastern Savings Time. I'm not sure what it is anymore, but it is 11 a.m. and we are here with another episode of... Real Estate Talk TGIF with the man, the myth, the legend, Whoa. simply known as Coach Kyle Draper. Kyle and I have uh, we're, we're, we recently met, but we've been, ta- been talking about you for a long time. And and you are just the bomb, man. You are just like, you know, when you talk about social media and Facebook and all this other stuff, it's just really, really cool. And I'm so happy that you're able to join us here. We're going to have someone else joining us to to chime in on this party a little later. Um, yeah, we got, we got we got we got the man Kyle Draper here, and and and, and Coach Kyle Draper. Let me ask you a question. It's a question okay. I ask everybody on this broadcast to start the show, and I say, Do you know what TGIF stands for? Uh, as a child of the '90s, I'm hoping it stands for Thank God It's Friday, right? Well, you know what, Kyle, you are very very close, and I want to commend okay. you. On- attempt um but there's only been three or four people to get it right out of 171 dang it is. um and it actually means thank god it's finale sorry it's just finale what it is. finale <laughs> thank god it's finale and here we are right so this is episode 171 168 weeks in a row um wow. we have we have gone through three years we've been doing this and our objective is to give value on this broadcast and i've got kyle draper on here and kyle look man you're 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 like one of the nicest guys I've ever met. Just in a short time, we've known each other and talked. I want you to talk about how you got to where you are today. Is and what yeah. I mean by that is, you know, where did you start? What made you do what you're doing today? That's really what I'm talking about. Well, Dave, I, first of all, thank you for having me on the show. Um, it's it's an honor to be here. I love what you're doing. I love the value that you're bringing to the industry. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, man kudos on 171 episodes in 168 weeks holy cow man that is that's incredible thank you and so i I love it i'm on episode 53 of my show and i i can't imagine what it's going to take for me to get to 171 so you're awesome man So, so dave my story it it i i it's a weird one i think so i I did not set out in life to do this. I, I'm not really a tech savvy person. Uh, like when stuff breaks at my house, if my dad's close by, I'm usually like, Hey dad, can you come fix my microwave? Hey, can you come help me with, you know, whatever it is? That's just not really what I'm gifted at. So for, for me to now be a social media expert and be in supposedly being this techie guy, it's really, it's just not me. And the way I got here is I spent my entire 20s as a youth pastor. And so at the time I was a fifth generation pastor, I thought that that I was going to be a youth pastor my whole life. I loved being in in, in church ministry. And, and finally, Dave, one day I just realized that because I had a title of pastor it was keeping people from being their true selves around me, All right? So if if you cussed a lot, you didn't cuss around me. If you drank a lot, you didn't drink around me. And and I just looked up and was like, man, I really love people. Through and through, I love people. That is my passion. And my title was hurting my ability to love people. And so I left church ministry, and out of all things, I got into roofing. And in roofing, roofing is where I started to learn how to do sales. I started to learn social media, marketing. I was the only roofer at the time in Oklahoma that was going live from the roofs of houses, which was incredibly dangerous and probably not beneficial. But, but the, I was just cutting my teeth at all the things now that I, that I teach for a living. And, and so I, I learned all that through roofing. 
I helped grow that into a successful roofing business that, that my dad and my brother still run today. But I had this revelation because I, you can't always tell on video, but, but I'm 6'3", 298 pounds. All right, I, I used to say 300, but I just got under the 300 mark. So 6'3", 298 pounds. And I just was standing on a roof one day going, this can't be it for me. Like this cannot be how I spend the next 20 years of my life. And so I left our family roofing company and started a company with a buddy of mine building websites for realtors. And so through roofing, I was doing a lot of inspections for realtors. Then I started this company building websites for realtors. And while we're doing this, I'm, I'm realizing, and you've been in real estate for a long time, that cold calling sucks. Right. It's the worst. Right. And I'm calling realtors trying to go, hey, Dave, it's Kyle Draper. How's your website? It's probably not great. Can I talk to you about ours? And nobody wanted to talk to me. Right. I, that was that was not what you were looking to have a conversation about that day. And so, man, the, the way I work is like prayer. Prayer is everything to me. And so I literally one day I just stopped and prayed and I was like, God, what am I good at? And what do realtors stuck at? Right. And what I came up or well, what he gave me was, Kyle, you're a good communicator. Realtors at the time stuck at Facebook. Start learning Facebook and then use your gift of communication to teach classes, teaching them Facebook. And so, Dave, I kid you not, I booked five classes before I ever even had a class because I knew if I didn't have a, a ticking clock, I would have never actually done it. Right. And so I called the, 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 the several of the biggest real estate offices in the city, and, man, I put classes on the calendar. I said, hey, I'm teaching a Facebook class. Can I come teach it? Yes. And in about two years, I probably taught 200 classes all over Oklahoma City and around Oklahoma. And finally, long story short, uh, an office from Dallas, Texas, reached out to me. We saw you online. We'd love for you to train our agents. And that was kind of the light bulb moment for me where I realized, am I good at this? I think I'm really good at this. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, so baby. now, this December, it'll be four years that wow. I coach and speak full time, teaching about social media and storytelling and video, and and really, more than anything, Dave, I like to tell people I don't consider myself a social media expert. I consider myself a people expert that's figured out how to leverage relationship through social media to grow our business. So and so now here we are. And, and here we are, right? And you're, 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 you've been going strong. I mean, people, people love talking to you. Your broadcasts are amazing. Um, it's just like, it's, it, it's just, just fantastic the way you do it. Now, you just said something that I want to get right into. I mean, we talk okay. about, we look at social media, we look at posting, and everybody's going to say, well, you know what? Uh, I post a little bit here and there. Sorry, consistency wins. We all know that. We can talk about that in a minute. But you talked about storytelling. Yeah. You know, and, and, and what I see is a lot of people, and we talked a little bit about this the other day, what I've seen is, you know, people are always, and I'm getting right into this, people are saying, well, you know, they need to get noticed. So they do the just listed, they do the just sold, where they're putting up their hands and say, hey, I'm great on this, I'm that. Right. There's no stories involved. It's nope. like a billboard. And in my, in my opinion, it's garbage. Talk to me about the, 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 what they're posting that way and what it should be when it comes to storytelling. Yeah, Dave, that's a, it's a great question. And, and it's really, we make storytelling out to be really difficult and it, it really is just a minor tweak on, on what it is that we're doing. And so, for example, instead of showcasing uh, just listed, tell the story of how you got that listing. Tell the story of the family that's represented in that listing, right? Tell the Tell the story of, of what led up, of all the, the hardships you had, all the other realtors you had to fight through to win that opportunity, right? right. Those are all the things. What, what we're really great at is, is just sharing the finished products of things instead of investing in how it was made or how it came to be. And, 
you you've probably seen it dave there there was a, it's probably still a show but it was on like discovery or one of those channels and it was called how it's made yeah i remember that yeah and it would take totally random things that we've never cared about knowing how they were made and it would show us the behind the scenes of how it was made and i'll never forget that i was flipping through the tv one night and how it's made was on and it was on how a toilet's made I've never sat on a toilet and been like, huh, I wonder how they made this. But it was fascinating because we're all drawn into stories. We're all drawn into the behind the scenes. And I watched an entire episode on how to make a toilet when I've never wondered how to make a toilet in my whole life. <laughs> and, and so this is the type of stuff that if we would just begin to think a little bit deeper and the problem, Dave, even beyond storytelling is – we treat social media as a sales tool right when when we should treat it as a relationship generator exactly right and and exactly. so when we when we fix the mindset piece storytelling gets easier for example yesterday i spoke in a town called wichita falls texas it's about two hours from where i live and so i last night i was in the car with my kids i took a selfie and when i post it and you guys can go to my Instagram or Facebook if you want to see it. But my post said this, Dave, there is nothing I love, or, or I think I said there, there's very few things I love more than speaking. But one of them is coming home to these two. And so instead of just posting a selfie of the kids, I reminded people that I was out speaking, right? That's promotional, but it doesn't feel that way. Right. Because exactly. I just get a little bitty sprinkle of it with two really adorable kids. That's storytelling. Yes. And so this is what realtors need to get better at. It's instead of just posting the closing photo with your arm around your, your clients, tell the story of, of how you help them win, of what they had to overcome to make this moment possible, that they approached you because they were moving out of state in a month. And we're scared to death they were going to leave that state with a mortgage still in it. Right. But thank God I met Dave because Dave was able to help us get our house closed in 18 days so that we can move to our new state with peace of mind and expectation of what's to come. Yeah. Dude, exactly. you started talking about exactly. that. Exactly. And man, people I mean, are drawn to you they'll, they'll, instead yeah, of annoyed right. by you. They're, they're going to they're gonna engage. You know, I did, uh, I actually uh, just posted a new listing for myself today and I, the, the, the way the listing came is an agent that used to work for me and my brokers a number of years ago. He wasn't, he, he was part time and he needed to sell an investment property. He came, I told that story on a, on a Facebook live this morning as I posted the, uh, the listing this morning. So I love you know, it. you've got to do, you've got to tell what's going on because yep. look, here's the interesting thing and, and correct me if I'm wrong. And I said this in, in a, uh, in an event I spoke at yesterday, this thing right here, this is called a cell phone. It's called a mobile device. I got this other thing over here which stares at me all day long and I really shouldn't because it distracts me called an iPad, right? So I've got all these devices and this, this machine we're on now. People don't understand there's another word for these machines. They're called televisions, right? Yep. It's the new television. And what you're doing is real. And we're building, we're building, like if you look at a, at a, at a movie star, right? Or at a baseball player. For me, it's, you know, I've always been a big baseball fan. So, yeah. you know, there's, yeah. there's, there's, there's people, there's, there's players in the New York Yankees that I, I don't idolize, but I know everything about them. So I have a parasocial relationship with them. Yep. And that's what you're going to create, even if it's just in text and an image. You agree with all that? And we're talking about reality TV here. Yep. You and know, Dave, I you're mean, so, it, the, this is, we need to talk about this further because yeah. the, I couldn't, as you were talking, I was like, what is the, what is the, what do you call it? And it's parasocial relationship. And so you said it and I, I couldn't, grab it out of my brain but what what everybody watching this or listening to this later has to understand is our brains don't know the difference between people watching you and i right now and then people looking at all the celebrities that went to the met gala earlier this week right it all registers the same in the neurons and all the stuff that, that's going on inside of our brain activity and so this is why what we do is so powerful. And, and this is why 
we cannot get so caught up in what I call the vanity metrics of social media. Because if you're not, if you weren't careful, you would have shut this thing down at episode 11 because it didn't have the viewership that you wanted yet. And a lot of people would have said, this is stupid. Why am I doing this show? Nobody cares. But you had the wherewithal to keep going. Right. And so now there's people that will watch this show every week. They'll never comment. They'll never share it. But they're paying attention. Exactly. And, that's, and, that's and if what you happens. just keep going, they're right. going to show up. And, and I just I can't tell you, Dave, how many people I talk to on a regular basis they go, man, Kyle, I love your stuff. And I'm like, who are you? Right. And they go, I watch all your videos. I just don't comment on them. Yeah. And so I it's powerful. The, I, I get the same thing all the time where people say, you know, I always watch your TGIFs. You know, I'm always there seeing it. But you don't see it. And here's the interesting thing, too. I mean, look, I know that between, between you and me, what we're trying to do is we're trying to help as many people as we possibly can in Absolutely. what we do on a regular basis. And uh, every now and then you'll get a call, you'll get a text, you'll get an email. Thank you so much for what you said today on your video. It really meant a lot. And you have no idea that this person was on. And that is the beauty of when you're looking to help people and, and you actually are doing it, right? That's yeah. the beauty of yep. it. It's, it's so, so cool, right? It, it's, you know? it's unbelievable. And it also, so Dave, yesterday I, I uh, was doing my coaching program and I had a realtor come on and kind of co-teach with me. And she's in the, the Cincinnati, Ohio, Northern Kentucky area. And she crushes it on social media. She's an unbelievable storyteller, super engaged in her local community. Just She's great on social media. And I asked her, I said, Annie, how often do you get talked down in your commission when you're listing a property? And she said, never. Why? Because she proves her worth over and over and over again on social media. So by the right. time she gets to the table, the people sitting across from her already see her value. And unfortunately for a lot of realtors, Dave, they're getting nickel and dimed every time. They're getting right. asked to take 2% and then 1%. Right. And it's because they're not showcasing their value beyond sitting at the table. And it's killing right. them and they don't even recognize it. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, the same, it, it's the same as setting up tools and systems of what you're doing because the way you do social media has got a lot to do with with your methodology, your system. This is the Dave right. Finale way. This is the Kyle Draper way, right? It doesn't have to be copied from anybody else because I'm going to tell you, if you're going to copy it, you're going to screw it up because you're not seeing the bare bones. You're not seeing the back office. You're not seeing the yeah. the, 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 the playbook of what's really being hap what's happening. So, you know, if you're an agent and you're doing social media, no matter what you do, you need to be consistent with what you're doing. And consistency not only means being consistent in the product or consistent in what they're looking at, it's consistency in actually doing it. Right. Because no one's going to want to work with you if they see, well, you did a post back in back in July and then you did yeah. one in August and you did one right. yesterday. Right. You know what I mean? So absolutely. It, there's, a, there's a lot of different things you can do. So so let's 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 just get, get into the nitty gritty of a couple of little things. So okay. what is the best platform to use i mean look there's different people on facebook there's different people on instagram youtube TikTok, doing reels doing stories doing all this stuff pinterest tell me if it was up to you kyle what yeah. would you tell people so i think it it has to be a default 99 percent of the time to either facebook or instagram okay and and the reason i say either dave is because it, it shame on me if I try to tell you what's my favorite when I don't know your audience. And so for me, for example, I love working with 40, 50, 60 year old realtors. Those are my favorite realtors to work with. That puts me in a Facebook category. So I default most of my content to Facebook. But if realtors watching would go, well, man, I want to work with first time home buyers that are like, you know, 28 to 35. Right. Well, then that's going to be more of an Instagram crowd. And if I were them, I would be defaulting most of my content to Instagram. And then from there, create it for where you want to be. So I, I do a lot of Facebook lives. 
I do most of my stuff through Facebook. But then if it makes sense, I might download that Facebook Live and put it on my YouTube channel. I might download that Facebook Live and put it as a reel or an IGTV episode. But I don't bog myself down with how do I make this fit everywhere? Because so when we do that, it, it takes it, it, that's impossible. It takes forever. We don't have the bandwidth for that. Right. Right. So so okay, so one of the things I've said to agents as I was I was training them and coaching them through their businesses, I would say, look, if you want to work with everybody, you're gonna work with nobody. So yep. think about that line, right? And I think that makes a lot of sense in your real estate business. And and but here's the other thing is 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 the same thing true if you want to be on all the channels. Everything you're doing, if you're doing it once, is not going to fit everywhere. Is that exactly what you're saying? Yeah. It's it's most of the time, it's not going to just naturally fit everywhere every time. Right. right. But also, Dave, we already know that most realtors on social media aren't great at it. So why would you cho choose to try to do it bad five ways when you could get really good one way? Okay, so, so good. Well, I was just say, so for those of you paying attention to this, I would go backwards and go for 90 days, I'm going to focus on what I think is my most full of opportunity channel. And if it's Instagram, great. For the next 90 days, don't mess with TikTok. Don't mess with Facebook. Don't mess with LinkedIn. Focus on getting good at Instagram. Now that you, now you've given yourself this baseline of understanding and you're even developing a little bit of expertise over 90 hard days of doing it, then you can begin to pull back in some of the other stuff. Right. Right. And and that's to me the best way to go about it if you actually want to get good enough at it to where it benefits your business. Excellent. So I want to put myself out there and critique I want you to ask you to critique something that I do, right? Okay. So mostly every day I'm outside either running three miles or walking three miles, whatever it is, it depends on what day it is. I'm doing at least, I'm doing running at least three or walking at least three, right? So at yeah. the end, a lot of times I'm doing some videos. And if you see me in my workout clothes with a hat outside early in the yep. morning, that's what I'm doing. So my, my practice has been, I'm gonna say about 90% of the time, I'll do a Facebook Live based on some point I want to get across. It might be one minute, it might be up to five minutes, right? So I finish that thought, I put it out there, it's there. Then I say, okay, I need to be on Instagram, but I can't use that same video for Instagram. So I go on Instagram and I mean, I'm doing two things. I'm doing a post with a under 60 second video on the same topic, but I'm just talking differently about it. Okay. Because I want okay. to fit it in. And then I do a quick story about, you know, about the same thing. Does that make sense? Is that too much work or am I overlapping too much? Um, I, I think for you to do that sometimes, I think that's fine. I think that's way more work than you need to do. Okay. Um, I, I think in, in this example, I think you're putting too much emphasis on the need to be everywhere every day. Okay. And so what I mean by that is I would maybe on a Monday – you you're you're going you go live and you just let it live on Facebook. On Tuesday, go live on Instagram and just let that become an IGTV episode and let that live on Instagram. On Wednesday, go do TikTok and record a minute long TikTok in after your morning run or walk. And and then Dave, what you're gonna do is you're gonna end up leaving people wanting more because somebody on TikTok is gonna go. He mentioned he did a video Monday, but I don't see a video Monday. And so now you're forcing them to go to Facebook to find that video. You're forcing them to follow you on Instagram to get the Tuesday video. And so now you're actually beneficial to people on multiple channels because it's totally different. But if it feels enough the same, I don't really need to follow you on Instagram because I'm basically getting that same message on Facebook. And so that's why I wouldn't do it that way. And my way is giving you less work, which is also beneficial. Yeah, I like that a lot. I mean, and, and look at this. I, I just got a coaching session and didn't pay. Look at that. Yeah, me. Because then, <laughs> Dave, here's what's so cool. So right now, I'm in the middle of, of a 90-day challenge on TikTok for right. myself. 
And so I think today's like day 51. I haven't made it all 51 days. I think I've done like 44 videos out of 51 days. And, and I, I don't harp on it, right? This isn't 75 hard. I'm just trying to get better, which I am. Because 44 videos is better than zero, which is where right. I was 40, right. you know, 51 days ago. And so what's cool is now I'll do a TikTok video and then I might post the TikTok video in my Facebook group. Or I'll do the TikTok video and then I might post that in the stories of Instagram. And so now I'm using the different platforms to kind of pimp out the other platforms. Yep. And so you're going to see my TikTok in my Instagram stories and go, Oh man, I need to go follow Kyle on TikTok. Right. And and so I'm I'm treating it very intentionally as opposed to man, I've got to say this the exact same way on every single platform. I think we need to leave people wanting more as opposed to always trying to give them what they probably aren't even asking for. That's a that's a great great point. I mean, you know, it, it's um it's a great point. We talked a little bit about that the other day, so it kind of gives me a direction. And I want everybody to look at look at the direction as well. Is one of the things that it, it it still provides me. I'm still going to do my regular posting, my all my stuff for my yeah. my, my, my how to stuff and all my stuff on modern agents and and real estate skill builder. I'm still doing that, but this is something that I'm doing on a regular basis anyway. And I'm still being the big C word consistent in what I'm doing. If I change that up a little bit, and that makes an awful lot of sense. Right. And one of the things I love about it, honestly, is it takes some it takes work off of me, takes pressure yeah. off of me to come up with something, right? And and you know, honestly, it just it's never anything to come up with with it, you know. So it's 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 in us all uh, that are kind of like supposedly extroverted, and and a lot of the extroverts right. you see online are really aren't. They just they're just like they're play acting. It's like they wanted to be an actor their whole life, you know. I mean, yeah. I always wanted to be on stage singing. I never got there. And sometimes you might see me sing not often, but come on. I want to see that. Yeah. Well, you, you got to keep waiting for it. Who knows when it's going to happen? <laughs> I, I it, sometimes one of my clients has to, has to, uh, has to challenge me on it. But anyway, so I want to talk about consistency, right? So, yeah. um, and, and you mentioned it a little bit, it alluded to it. I believe, and I want you to expand on this if you could, that your post on a regular basis is better than the non post on a non regular basis. And your imperfect video is better than the non-video from your competitor. Would that be correct? Right. Please oh. expand talk a little bit about that. Yeah, Dave, 100%. So the, the bottom line, like consistency is key in every area of our lives, that, right? That's not a secret to anybody. Nobody's going to hear you or I say that and go, wow, Dave's brilliant. Kyle's brilliant. Oh, consistency. I've never thought about that. We know that that's true of everything. What we do wrong is we create a level of consistency that isn't appropriate for where we are, right? So what that means is if, Dave, if, if you and I are going to start training for a marathon today, well, the level at which you start might be different than the level at which I start right? because I'm not as in good a shape as you. So I can't go, well, but Dave's doing two miles every day consistently. Well, I might need to start with half a mile every day consistently, Right, because that's where I'm at, and then I need to build up from there. And so when we talk about social media, I don't want people, when I speak and teach classes, I tell people all the time, if you do no video, don't, don't kid yourself like you're going to start doing a video every day. You're not going to do that. Let's right. just do your first one. Like, right. let's actually do one, right. and then let's try to do another one in, in less time than there was in between the last two. And let's slowly build up to where we're on social media on a daily basis in some capacity. Right. It might take somebody a week to get there. It might take somebody six months to get there, depending on where they're starting. Right. But this exactly. is a marathon, not a sprint. 100%. And so 100%. we've got to be building social media for who's coming, even more so than for who's here right now. And, and that is wildly, wildly important. And, and what we're trying to accomplish. And so everybody's got to understand that they're running their race. They're not running your race. They're not running my race. They're running their race, right? I can exactly. step into a 90 day video challenge because I do video for a living. It's a part of what I do for a job. 
but I don't know that I'd recommend a random realtor to try to tackle 90 days in a row of video if they're not doing video. Hey, I, I, I got to tell you something. I do video all the time. I've been doing it for 14, 15 years, longer yeah. than anybody that I know, right? And if you said to me, Dave, we're going to do a 90-day challenge. Every day you're going to do a video about this. Guess what? I would lose. You know why I would lose? Because I'm a I'm not just a Monday through Friday guy, but you know what? On weekends I'm doing other things. I mean, if I if I'm right. not if I'm not working, I'm doing stuff I love to do, or maybe I'm working around the house, and I might forget to do a video. So that's why that's the reason that I could lose because you know my family time is my family time, and that's really important for everybody to look at, right? Right. You know, you you mentioned seventy five hard. Hey, you know what? I don't think I'd make three or four days with 75 hard, <laughs> you know, not because I yeah. don't want to or wouldn't be able to commit. It's just because, you know, it's you really got to commit. You got to put everything else aside for it. And I'm yeah. not asking anybody to put anything aside, everything aside right. for video. So as we move along, I want you to talk about talk about the, one of the biggest problems that I hear from agents. Well, what do I post or what do I do a video about? What, yeah. what is that? What are the thoughts that have to go into one's head? to simplify it, Kyle, because it's, it's, yeah. it's a question it, I hear all the time. And Dave, it, it's so freaking simple. It, first of all, it requires us. We've got to get out of our sales mind and into our relationship space. The, the reason most realtors struggle with what to post is because in their mind, they're asking themselves, what can I post that's going to bring me business? So now You've, you've instantly cut off like 90% of your life because, well, you're not going to post about your kids. That's not going to bring you business. You're not going to post about your lunch. That's not going to bring you business. So now you're like, well, I have to post about real estate. And now you've pigeonholed yourself into something you don't really even want to talk about anyway. And so what I try to teach people for content is you need to develop pillars. When you have pillars of content, and, and this isn't original. I didn't come up with this, right? Pillars of content have been around for, for forever. Right. But my, my natural pillars, Dave, are, are my family. So that could look like a million different things. That could be my wife, my kids, my parents, us on a trip, my wife and I on date night, right? That me in the carpool line taking the kids to school, right? All of that is fair game inside of that pillar. The, the another uh, another pillar is my passions. What I'm passionate about, right? I, I love learning. I love growing. I love people. I love mentoring. I love, you know, playing with the kids. I love going to do things with my family. I, I love sports. And so all of those things can become content for me. Maybe photos, maybe videos, maybe stories, right. maybe TikToks, right? But that's my second pillar, passions. My third pillar is daily life. What am I doing on a daily basis? So included in this would be, what did I eat for lunch? And, and let me help people understand this. Guys, I don't post what I ate for lunch sometimes because I care what you think about it. I post it, Dave, because in a weird way, people care. We're so nosy now because of social media. And so I will post my food because it will always get engagement and engagement's the name of the game. Right. And right. so we've got to be willing to post and talk about more than we even think people care about because they do. And so daily life is, is super important. Daily life includes behind the scenes of what are you doing today in your real estate business that's boring. You know, are, are you, you, do you have a stack of papers on your desk and you're plugging everything in? you know, to, to the MLS, take a, take a picture and put it in your stories. Let people see that you're working because Dave, let me just, can I just pause for a second and, and yeah. stand on a soapbox? Please do. And, and I'm not going to say anything that you don't already know because you've been doing this forever, but guys, please listen. If you've been kind of listening up to now and like taking notes or, or doing something else, stop and listen. Realtors, the consumer doesn't think you do jack crap. The consumer doesn't think you do anything. Right. Now, I work with you guys for a living. 
I know how hard you work, but it doesn't matter what I think. If the people you're trying to serve don't think you're worth what you want to be paid. Dave, do you know why they think this? Do you know why the consumer thinks this? Because the only thing realtors know how to post is new listing, closing, vacation from the money I made from that listing. My kids are in private school. Check out my wife's new Louis Vuitton purse. Another listing, another closing, at a really expensive baseball game. None of those pictures involve you actually working, which makes the consumer think your job is really easy. And so shame on us as the real estate community for allowing the consumer to look at us as lowly as they do. And this is why the open doors, the Zillows, this is why they can come in and realtors are pulling out their hair going, why would you pick them? <laughs> because they don't think you do anything. Right. And so we've right. got to get better at telling the daily life of what's going on, of the blood, sweat, and tears that's going into this industry. But it's not sexy, so it doesn't end up turning into content. And, and so look at that. I, dude, those are, those are great things. Man, right. I, I would love to play some Hold'em with Carl. And uh, <laughs> man, I, I'm surprised that like whiskey didn't make it into that comment. That yeah, feels I like whis I mean, whiskey that, should have been in that, there. Carl? Come on, Carl. So we've Dave, we've got to get away from just posting the highlights, and we've got to get into showcasing what makes me look more of a human to you. Right. And and so the biggest piece of this business wise is the most important funnel or, or pillar is what I call business education. And there's a reason why I don't call it real estate. I call it business education because I want my students, I want the people that sit in a room with me teaching it to realize that if they would become educators of real estate instead of just salespeople in it, attraction would have so much more power in their lives. Well, yeah, it's, it's like, I, I look at a lot of agents and we just, we did, uh, we're doing, we do events under the, the, the moniker of modern agents. And yeah. what we, what I've learned from the great people I've done these events with is that these are all top agents. And one of the things that makes them better is sharing what they're doing with others. Not only what right. worked, but what didn't work, right? Sharing 100%. And teaching, and teaching, getting people in a room and say, Hey, this is how you do it. And what I've also noticed, uh, along with what I do and, and people I work with through Modern Ages and everything else I do, is that they're all willing to talk about their failures, to talk about what, and they're all open for a phone call. They're all open to help. And I'm sure, as, as you are, right? Yep. So, I mean, yep. in, 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 in the business education part of it is just as much, in, just as important because it's a passion of what we have. It's Absolutely. part of passions as well, right? Yep. And Dave, Carl got it right in the comments. Carl said it's a leadership role. Yep. Guys, we crave good leaders to follow in our country right now because sadly there are not very many. Right. And so, you know, you it's interesting, Dave, how in a room full of business people, if you ask everybody, who's your mentor? Most business people don't have one. Right. They don't have an, a, an actual human holding their hand as they're walking through new seasons of life that they haven't experienced yet. And right. so if I can become that digital mentor to people, if I can become that digital father figure, if I can, you know, talk about parenting as a dad of an eight and six year old and help the dad of a three and four year old, I'm sinking in those, those connection points so that he feels forever indebted to me. Right. Because of the, the level at which I've served him. And so this is where we've got to get better. And, and here's the easiest way to do it, Dave. So let me see here. All right. So one of my favorite things to do on social media is take books, right? So here's Gary V's jab, 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 right yep. hook. Everybody knows who Gary V is and if you don't, go look up who Gary Vee is. But here's what I've also learned, Dave. When it comes to content, most people don't own this book. 
and they're not going to. Right. right? Most people don't read. And so right. what I love to do is when I'm reading, while I'm learning and growing, I love if something jumps off the page at me, I'm going to jump on Facebook Live and I'm going to go, guys, man, I am reading in chapter six of Gary V's Jab, 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 Right Hook. And man, he just punched me square in the mouth with, with something he said. And I want to share it with you. So y'all check this out. Check this out. Here's what he said. And then I'm going to read a quote from him. And then I'm going to turn into Coach Kyle. And I'm going to go, this is what it means to me. This is what I'm going to stop doing. And this is what I'm going to get better at because of that moment. Right. And now other people, Dave, go, oh, my gosh, I'm so glad you did that video today. And they're not going to go tweet at Gary V and thank Gary V for saying that in his book. They're going to thank me for saying it. That's right. I'm That's not the right. author. I, right? Like we just, we, we just, as you know, like we just lost one of the, the pillars of the real estate community, right? With Dave Jinks passing away. Right. You go pull a quote from any of the books that, that he had a part in writing. You're going to get credit for it. Even though you quoted Dave or, or whoever else it is. Yeah, and, and I want to add. I want to add one thing to that, to about posting and stuff, and, and give, being the educator. Is it doesn't matter if you're educating the public or you're educating a realtor, because it's going to be seen no. as the same thing, right? Because I know agents, I know I know leaders that are educating realtors, and that what gets them business. Because oh, you're the guy that teaches the realtors what to do. I want to work yep. with you. Right? So good, so good. And you know, here, yeah. here's why. Like, like, let, let's unpack this from a psychological standpoint. We all hate being sold to. We hate it, right? right? And so if I do a video where I go, hey, realtors, let me teach you something. And I'm a, if I'm a realtor, the consumer now watches that video with their guard completely down because right. they know that video is not technically for them. Right. So they watch it from complete authenticity, from complete, uh, there's no guard or barrier up. And that's going to lead you to more business than if you're like, hey, buyers, if you're not buying a house yet, if you're not refi, because now you're, you're selling to people. And so we can get so much more business by technically speaking to a different group of people than who we hope to buy and sell with. And it's so unbelievable. When we so, do it the right way, is that serving our market? Is that serving who we want to serve? Is that is that um, is that subliminal? Is that subliminal? I mean, explain that to me a little bit. Yeah, I think so. My goal, right? Like in my industry, being in social media and in the real estate space, I want to do my part in making the real estate space better. And so, the only way I can make the real estate space better is to call for the realtors to be better. And so if I'm the guy that's encouraging my fellow realtors to be better, let's serve the clients at a higher capacity. Well, man, the consumer's watching that and going, who better to help me sell my house than the guy that's calling the industry to be better? That's right. Now, that's right. I'm not going to crap on the industry while I'm doing it because now that's not doing what I'm trying to do. Right. I don't want to call my industry sleazy and, and talk about all the snakes that are in it. But I just want to, <laughs> in an encouraging way, call us to be better. Exactly. Exactly. Right? And, and it's powerful when when the consumer sees that and, and the light that that puts you in. Yeah. And I want I, I want to qualify something that I've, I think I may have said it, that if you're I talked about this when we we're talking about all the different platforms. Right. If you're trying to work, if you're trying to, uh, if everybody is your customer, your customer is no one. Or if you work with everybody, you work yep. with no one. But I want to, to, to completely understand, everybody to completely understand that your product, your posting, your message is going to affect someone a different way. Right. Right. You said this the other day. There are always people that need help. Right. 
and you might yep. be hitting a different desire, a different need, a different want. Because look, let's face it, you want to you want to help them with what they want, but you also at the same time need to give them what they need without asking, yeah. right? A lot of yep. agents believe that they need to tell people what they need. Well, you know what? They don't care what they need. They just know what right. they want. Right. Most people want to buy a house or sell a house. And if you tell them, well, you need to look at this, you need to look at that, screw you, you're done. Right. You know? 100%. So, so when we talk about content, when we talk about, you know, we talked about education. So let's go through the pillars of content one more time. So it's family, it's passions, it's daily life, and it's business education. And there's there, there's two that that I that I left out that that I didn't I didn't get to. One okay. is is local community, local community, and then the other is leadership. So local. So those are my again. six default pillars. So when you talk about leadership. Are you talking about volunteering? Are you talking about just taking the bull by the horns? What are we talking about there? And so for me, it, so I, it, some of you may not know who John Maxwell is. For those of you that do, I, I am a John Maxwell certified speaker, teacher, coach. And so I love leadership. Why, what is leadership? Leadership is, is looking inside of myself to grow before I'm asking someone else. Right. And so that may be me talking and talking to and encouraging other parents that's leadership right. that may be me talking to and encouraging other husbands that's leadership right. that may right. be talking to and encouraging us to just have a little bit more of an optimistic outlook today than we did yesterday to to have a little bit more of a watchful eye for the person that's hurting that we could lend a, a caring hand to that maybe yesterday we would have walked past without noticing right Exactly. It's, it's just little moments of our lives that when they begin to get better, there is a compounding effect that takes place that makes that whole ecosystem better. And so I am constantly encouraging people and loving on people to become the best version of themselves, sometimes even becoming a version of yourself that you didn't even realize you were capable of being. Exactly. I mean, that you just hit the nail on the head with people that they don't realize some things sometimes, right? And, and, yep. and you know, I, I mean, talking to you and, and going through a lot of different things with you in, a, in the past couple of days and today has been real inspiring. And I want to, I, I, I want to take the liberty if I can. Um, there's someone that that has that has really helped me get out of place with my own set space, and that is uh, someone that. Uh, He's dancing right now, but let's bring him on and show everybody how he's dancing. I want to welcome, I welcome my friend, my mentor, my coach, dance. Seku Pyle. Here he is, man. My hey, Seku, welcome, welcome to the party, man. Dude, I, this is like a, a Sunday brunch for me, man. I got two of my favorite plates right in front of me, man. What's going on, y'all? What's up, dude? Kyle it's good to Schaefer see you. in the place to be. I'm in the background, Woo! man. Uh, full disclosure, Dave, Kyle, I apologize. I am, um, uh, my voice isn't where it's supposed to be. Uh, I'm taking care of my kid. My kid, my kid is, she's COVID positive right now. And, and, you know, so she's the one that usually Man. takes care of all of us and, and I'm taking care of her. Uh, uh, no so, worries, man. so I was thinking, let me jump on. And really, 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 really get to spend a little time with my friends. But I wanted to say something, Dave. What Kyle doesn't know is the time that we've spent together, the time that I've known him, he's so impacted the way that I communicate with agents. All right, Katush, we're all doing this together. He's so impacted the way that I communicate with agents now that he has entered into my dictionary, my 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 encyclopedia of Sekuisms. Now I have entered a Kyle Draperism into the encyclopedia of Sekus. You already know enough people, mm. right? You already know it. enough people. I and so every single agent that I meet, I met, I met a ton of agents that have moved from you know DC to Atlanta, from Atlanta to Texas, from Texas to Tennessee, to this way, that way, the other thing. And everybody's worried about building, building, building their audience. I say, uh-uh. I want you to repeat after me. Coach Kyle Draper says, you already know enough people. 
And so that's a new that's that's in my lexicon now, brother. You already I love it, man. <laughs> that's awesome. And it and isn't it isn't it true? It's the right. Truth. Like every real estate company, if they're not careful, they just want to shove leads down people's throats and, and they want to teach lead gen and lead gen and lead gen and lead gen instead of relationship management. And, and if and we were just crazy. teaching more relationship management, man, people would be double and triple in their businesses Dude, because they already know enough. It is awesome. Hey, real quick. I know we're being serious and whatnot, and everything is 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 on board. But I just wanted to say, hey, Kyle, I loved your season opener with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, there, brother. Dude. <laughs> I'm sorry, did I hey, say something? Wrong? You know what? I have never <laughs> been more proud of a loss than a two point loss to the defending Super Bowl champs that returned all 22 starters. So uh, when you're a nine and a half point dog and you lose by two, uh, I, I know moral win. victories in sports are stupid, but <laughs> I'm taking this stupid one because we're going to beat some teams this year. <laughs> Maybe just not the Bucks. Well, I'll tell you this, and this is in, and and finale. You never heard me say this, okay? <laughs> right. You never heard me say this nobody out there in real estate world knows what i'm talking about but i actually uh, rooted for the boys come on dude I, you're I, welcome on this bandwagon any day well i rooted for the boys because i can't stand who's leading up the bucks i know <laughs> huh the easiest man in sports to hate yeah but that that leads us that leads us to the to the conversation that we've been having, man. It's like it, his skills, we may not like him, but his skills speak for themselves. The practice that he's put in, and he's in a new town, baby, and he got and he already knows enough people. Okay. And so all you got to do is manage the skills that you got, manage the people that you have. Dude, Kyle, you are an inspiration, man. And and, and I love everything that you're saying. Thank I have you, been bro. watching from the background, bro. And man finale just yeah old man skills it's a leadership role that's right old man skills right so so finale watching you two talk today right this is what this is this is this is a treat for me kyle i see that you're getting into tiktoks now yeah buddy i'm trying trying hard Dude, talk to this old man about what you're doing on that little young platform talk to me okay. about what's so powerful so, about it so now I, I think the jury's still fully out, but I am but I am bought in. And and here's well, so you know Nick Good. That this mm -hmm. is how it all started is Nick Good is uh he and I are good buddies, and we were talking about TikTok, and he we I don't remember if he challenged me or if I challenged him or if we just challenged each other. But we were like, let's just do a TikTok challenge. Let's go 30 days. Whoever can get the most likes, whoever can get the most new followers wins. And uh, we didn't even have a bet. We just, it was just bragging rights. And so, man, we, we just started doing videos. And honestly, he was kicking my butt. I wasn't even doing any videos. And he was like, dude, I'm beating you. I'm beating you. He was talking, not talking trash. And bro, I did a video that I'm super passionate where the first eight words out of my mouth, out of my mouth was realtors, quit posting all your listings. <laughs> And dude, it ignited like wildfire. We're and nuts. 20, 23,000 views later, I got Jeez. 600 new followers from that one video. I got thousands of likes from that one video. And Nick never stood a chance in, in the competition. And dude, here's what I've been so fascinated by with TikTok. One, I'm a very long-winded communicator. As a former pastor and as a speaker as a, for a living, most of the time, I get 60 minutes, 90 minutes. Yesterday, they gave me two hours and 10 minutes. Like, I know I can add value if you give me that much time. And I'm going to chase some rabbits, and I'm going to – but I'm, but I'm going to land the plane, and you're going to be glad you were in the room. That's right. Man, on TikTok, I don't get to go, what's up, everybody? It's your boy. Uh, they're gone already. And so, man, guys, I am 
I am learning now. I've been speaking professionally for almost 19 years. Mm. And I am just now learning the power of having concise messaging yes, and being able exactly. to get directly to the punchline, directly to the hook to get them and then go and reverse and tell the full story once I already got your attention. And so, dude, I'm just learning whether TikTok works for me or not. It's making me just better at what I do for a living. It's, it's making it's me a better lesson. communicator. It's making me better at video. But the bonus is I'll be a thousand followers in the next week, probably. And I've already made money from it. Like I've already gotten a client from it. And man, hashtags are killer with TikTok. I'm literally getting followed by actual realtors and lenders, not by like 18 year olds or 13 year olds. And I'm blown away by it. And, and so the, the biggest thing for me was I had crapped on TikTok for two years. Mm -hmm. And I one night laid my head on my pillow and was like, dude, you're, you're doing what you tell everybody else to stop doing. Right. You're, you're, you're throwing the, 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 the white flag of surrender out before you've even tried it. You're no different than the realtor that's like, I'm not doing Facebook live. I don't want to do Facebook live. What's up, Eric? Big error. And, and so, Big dude, that, that was it for me is I will not be the guy that preaches one thing and doesn't do another. I will not be the so-called social media expert that doesn't even know what TikTok is. Right. And so that's why I said 90 days. I'm going to do 90 days worth, and then I'm going to decide if I like it or not. And I've already decided, like, I'm in. I'm going to keep going. And micro content is the future. Right. You do a ton of micro content. Dave, you do micro content. I do micro content. TikTok's literally micro content in and of itself. Go for it. Yeah. And so, so I can put it on TikTok and then share it in my stories. I can put it on TikTok and put it in my reels. It, it's it's so universal. It's awesome. Now I gotta do it. Now Come you on, gotta Dave. Do it, Finale. You gotta, you gotta do it, man. I tell you what, coach. I I I, I agents join me. And you know my my style, uh, Kyle. I, I I'm prospecting lead gen. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm learning the 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 art and science of micro content and social media, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. When people ask me a question, you know, Finale will tell you my favorite answer is I don't know. I'm a know nothing agent. You know, let's go and find out. You know, yep. people ask me now about content. People ask me now about social media. I got two stops on that train. I got Kyle Draper. I got I got uh, Nick Krem. And I tell them now, if you're not following the people who I'm following, you're doing it wrong. Mm. You're doing it wrong. So just go Perfect. out. First day, consultation, whether or not we're going to work together, who are you following? I want to know who you're following. So if you've yeah. got questions about content, first, my question to you is, well, my answer is, I don't know. Who are you following? And my answer is always, if you want to know who I'm following, Kyle Draper, Nick Krem, Grant Wise, you want to get out there and you want to look at the best of the best of the best doing it. Kyle, who are you following? If, if you might, if you, if you, you know, like who's in your top, who are you following? Who are you learning from right now? Excuse my language. So I... This is going to sound weird. I I probably don't follow as many people for where I want to go mm -hmm. as I follow people that I feel like are behind me that I'm trying to discover how to get them where they want to be. Mm. And so I like I follow I follow just tons of realtors because I want to watch. I'm a studier of right. what they're doing, right? Uh -huh. right? To try to yeah to try to rephrase my messaging to make more sense based on like, for example, yesterday, Sekou, I was, I was in a coaching program and I had this huge revelation because I'm willing to listen. I had this plan to teach, but I chose instead to listen. And I was listening to the agents talk and the revelation I had was every realtor says they don't have time, but really that's a scapegoat to, I don't know what to say, mm. but they're defaulting to, I don't have time. And so I had this huge revelation of like, I don't need to help them have time anymore. I need to give them confidence in their messaging. And if they have confidence in their messaging, they're going to want to make time because they're going to want that message to be out for the people. 
And so wow. I'm just There's constantly right there. So so that's dude, like that's like my biggest thing is I like I like I love Gary V. I follow Gary V. But if we get so caught up in who we follow, we also get caught up in trying to be like them. And yeah. and I don't want to yeah. be Gary V because Gary V's already Gary V. We don't need two Gary V's. We also yeah. need a Kyle Draper. <laughs> yes, right? we do. We need a Dave Finale. We need a Seku. Like, and so if I'm not careful, I need just enough of you guys to rub off on me to help me be better, but not too much of you to make me feel inferior or or worse. Mm. Mm. And so yeah. I'm very careful about the way I follow people is not maybe the way a lot of other people do because we can get a lot more insecurity than confidence if we're not careful of the way we follow. My oh, man. Yep. Yeah. I, I think that's a mic drop right there. You know, um, it's really, really important for us to bring value and, you know, um, being involved in a lot of different things. We've got this platform, we've got other platforms and people talk about being, being fearful. People talk about doubt and stuff. And a lot of times the best way around that is action, right? So um, I've been lucky because I am, I forced myself into action um, and I always can get better. And I'm always looking at getting better. And I'm embarking on things, you know, uh, some will say, Dave, you, reti you retire yet? I say, what's that? Right. And it's just, I'm going to keep going. And with people like say Koo and Kyle Draper and whatever, I mean, it's just, it's just very, very, very cool. I mean, it's just being able to communicate with you guys, being able to watch what you do. And I suggest this to everyone that may watch this live, may see it later. You need to address, you know, content. And how do you get it? Talk to people. Yeah. Listen to people. You know, e educate yourself and uh, just have fun. Have fun. Have Huge. a lot of fun, bro. Man, Dude, Kyle, I I'm following the people, a bunch of people that make me laugh. And that, too, that, that that I think what you just said was just key, man. And so, uh, like, like slow down and speed up, man. Sometimes just looking backwards and just asking the question is, key. oh my god, man, that was just awesome, dude. I right. feel better. You just gave me so like a shot in the arm or something. Come like on, that, hey, can I, <laughs> hey, can I tell y'all this? This is a running joke in our house, but I I think there's a level of truth to it. My wife hates it when I say this. So my wife loves plants. We have probably like 60 plants in our house. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you, so you get this, right? We have multiple rooms in our house that look like that. And so about six months ago, one of her plants was dying and she mm. just happened to put it in my office. And mm. I, I've always heard it said that you can speak positivity to plants and that they'll begin to come back to life. And so no joke. A couple months in, she came into my office and that plant had come back to life. And I went, honey, what do I do all day? I just praise people. I preach to people. I love and nurture people like that plant feels loved on. And she was like, that's so dumb. You're an idiot. And so then she put a second plant that was dying in, in my office. I did it again. You know, so, plant whisperer, baby. I might, I might have to get some business cards that say Listen, plant whisperer on it. I, it might not just be plant whisperer, man. I feel much better, bro. <laughs> yeah. But hey, on a serious note, man, I'll be praying for you and the fam that that y'all keep fighting so, and get get well quick. Yeah. So so we're 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 actually out of time. We're up against time. And and Kyle, I want to ask you. I mean, we've got a couple of things scrolling on the bottom. Is that the best way for people to get in touch with you to? see if they can get you to work with them or whatever. And just, yeah. to see is that it? Yeah. Kyle Draper.com has everything you could ever want from me. My podcast is on there, which I, I know I'm biased, but I highly encourage you to listen to. And you then too. I'm coach Kyle Draper everywhere, everywhere oh. you can go on social media other than like Snapchat. I'm not rolling there, but at coach Kyle Draper and Dave, oh. it's been an honor to be on with you, man. You know, I'm going to, I, I got two things and I got to, I'm going to, I'm going to let my man, my friend, my mentor, my coach, uh, ask the question that we ask at the end of each broadcast, because he actually brought it forth. A, I, I don't know, a hundred episodes ago, who knows, Dude, but it was, this, is it was just, this is just a pleasure to ask this guy right, right. now. And, I'm, I, and, 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 I, and, and, uh, say cool, hit it, baby. Hey, uh, Kyle, how can we help you grow? Uh, Y'all are doing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're having conversation together and god this is the power and i'm here for the hat that's what i'm here for yeah. <laughs> so that's that's the only reason i came 
Because so, you know, Dave already told me that I get the gray one because I'm a coach like you, you guys. Go. That's right. And so I can't. That. Hey, y'all check this out. What my wife just did for me yesterday. She made me a hat rack what? for all for all my hats. Oh, that. You you know the story of the hats finale. You know you know his hat story. So yeah, yeah. He, well, I heard I heard him post about it the other day. So talked about your story. And wait 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 wait. wait. I, I don't want to waste time with that. I want to uh, I want to ask him one specific question that I know no one ever asks him. Oh, I think it is the greatest story in the world. If we got a few minutes, hey, Go ahead. what's the buffalo about on your hat, bro? Oh, the Buffalo. Dude, we have time for the Buffalo story? Just real, like, like as quick Let's as go. possible. Let's okay. Go. 90 seconds. Can I get, do I get 90 seconds? You got go it. Ahead, man. Where, where is my Buffalo hat at? Finale. If you've never heard this story, just want to I don't know story. where it at. I'm going to tell, I'm going to so, coaching off of this story forever. Go. So the hat itself is from when I spoke. So, I, you know, I, I buy hats in the cities I speak in. And so that hat came from a hat company in Austin. Uh, when I spoke in Austin, Texas. And the reason I bought it is because I'm in a mentor program where I am mentored. And the big part of our, of our program is the story of the Buffalo. And so what people don't know about, about Buffaloes is in a study, probably 40, I think it was in the sixties, they studied cow and Buffalo in the Hills of Colorado. And what they found was when a storm would come over the mountains, the cows would try to outrun it. And so by trying to outrun the storm, they were in the storm five times longer than they would have been if they literally would have done nothing. Mm. But then they looked at the buffalo. And what was fascinating is that when that same storm would roll over the mountains, the buffalo would pick their head up, look at the storm, and then begin to charge directly at it. Mm knowing that the shortest amount of time in the storm is to run towards it as opposed to run away from it. And, and so the story of the Buffalo is be a Buffalo, be a Buffalo baby. Oh, like man, whatever so we're struggling with, whatever we lack, we don't have to lack it. Let's run at it. <laughs> right. Let's go towards the pain knowing that though it might be tough, it won't be as long as if we try to avoid it. And so that's it, man. That it's it's one of my favorite stories to tell, and I don't tell I it probably as often story. as I should. I, I think that I think that that this story may have just um, made me a lot of money. <laughs> Let's run towards the storm, baby. And I'm freaking jealous right now that you two guys are wearing those hats, and I don't have mine on my head yet. Uh, well, it's so. it, 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 it's going to go in the mail probably tomorrow or maybe even today. So, um, it, you know what, man? It's 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 been. One of my greatest pleasures having you on as, as a guest you. on our broadcast and Seku cool as well. You know, we've got we we've had some really really great time. We got another one next week. We got Travis Plum coming on, uh, a friend of mine from years and and stuff. We've we we we've worked a little bit together and stuff. So that's good next week. But we've got some other greats coming up. We, we've had greats and here. Look at these two greats I got on right now. Right. So I want to I want to awesome. I want to thank Seku for coming on. I know you're not feeling well. I know you're getting better. Thank you for your time. Carl, thanks us. Sorry a little bit about Carl since he's been so uh, pivotal in our conversation today. Carl was a Century 21 broker when I was, and we used to meet at events and uh, also on, uh, on, on, on on some councils together, having to do a Century 21. And Carl has stayed in touch with me only through social media over the past 10 years. So Love it's it. pretty cool. And uh, you know what? Carl's a really good guy, man. Loves his cigars. And I think whiskey, too. He just didn't say Yeah, it. he should have so, said that. Carl, thanks for hanging with us, man. Yeah, we appreciate it. And guys, thanks so much. Stay on for one second. We're gonna go off. Uh, it has been it has been my pleasure. It's been one of the one of the top tens. Thank you so much Thank for your you time. Thank you for your effort. Us. I gotta I gotta try to make sure I do this right. And <laughs> let's see. I get mixed up all the time. This is the guys. best part when we're trying to figure right. out all those old dudes. We're trying to figure, figure all this shit out, out, right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> let's see if I can get this right. Here we go.